Hey everybody, I'm Liz Kettle with Textiles West, and Textiles West is the um, Pikes Peak Library District Maker in Residence program for the spring of 2020. So most of you are at home since we're all in stay-at-home orders, so we were really disappointed that we couldn't have our in-person classes. We hope to reschedule them, so check the library website. But um, we wanted to be able to bring this project to you at home because the theme of the project, oddly enough, was home. It's about our community and about making, um, sharing our stories about our community in a visual form. And at Textiles West, we're all about textiles. We love fabric. So, um, so I'm going to show you how to do this project at home with what you have and give you some ideas. So you're able to download all of our patterns from the library website. And there's, I think, eight or nine patterns, and you can um, do as many as you want. The other fun thing that you can do is mix and match them. In the two classes that we were able to have in person, everybody was taking pieces from different of our patterns and putting them together to create their own unique pattern, and that was so much fun to see. So I hope you'll have a lot of fun and experiment and um, play around with the ideas that we've got. So, And you are absolutely welcome to create your own design. You do not have to use our designs. You could do something abstract. You could do something that's inspired by what's in your yard or, or your view or your favorite place to go in, in the Pikes Peak region. So um, let me get started with what you'll need. And we have a written tutorial. So this video is kind of just to supplement the written tutorial. You need a base fabric to work on. When you work on a collage, usually you have some a base, either fabric or paper, depending on your medium. And so for fabric, we prefer to use flannel, just plain, inexpensive cotton flannel. It's, um, it's easy to stitch through and it's really inexpensive. Some places you could look at home might be an old baby blanket, um, a... Um, old sheet that isn't being used anymore, or um, old diapers. They're made out of flannel if you have cloth diapers. Um, craft felt. A lot of people, especially if you have kids, you might have craft felt around. It's super easy to stitch through, so that's a good base. Um, or denim. If you have some old jeans that uh, you're turning into cutoffs, you could use the leg parts to, to make your base fabric for this. That would be a good one. Now our collage is primarily fabric because we are a textile arts organization, um, but we give you full permission to use just about anything you have at home. You can make it entirely out of paper. Um, we would prefer that you collage it instead of just color it. So um, when you print out the patterns, you do not have to print them in color. You can print them in black and white, but we would prefer that you um, use these as a jumping off point and not just color it in. So things that you might have around the house that you didn't think of. First of all, there's old clothes. You could use any old clothes or sheets or linens that you have. Kids, ask your mom first. Um, this is an old vintage um, little hand towel for drying your hands. It's got somebody's initials on it. So I use this for part of my collage. This is a piece of commercial fabric and it's um, what I really wanted to show you was that um, sometimes the back of the fabric is a it's lighter in color, and sometimes that is the color you're looking for. So look at your supplies differently. You might be able to find something that isn't absolutely the, what you were looking for, but check the back, because that might work just well, just as well. Um, and this is a paper towel. So I, when I dye fabric, I clean up my mess with paper towels. And then I dry them, and I have these beautiful paper towels that I use in my collage work. Now, um, most of you don't have these on hand, but I was thinking you might be able to use food coloring for it, just to do like get scrunch it up, get a little damp, and then drop some food coloring on it, scrunch it some more. I think that that would work really well. You would have to let it dry, of course, and iron it. Um, and I used a two-ply paper towel and then took it apart. So this is just one of them, so you get lots. I couldn't experiment with it at home because I do not have any food coloring. But if you try it, let me know if it works. Just give us a text. The other thing you can use is paper. So um, a lot of people don't think about paper as a um, textile, but paper is generally made out of cotton. So um, it's really a great substance to use. This is scrapbook paper. Wouldn't this be a fun giraffe? Kind of reminds me of that Dr. Seuss guy. Um, so um, magazine pages that have some good imagery on it, or you could use old 
book pages. Now when I say old book pages, do not use a library book. The library would not be happy with us if you did that. But if you have an old book that um, nobody's reading anymore, or old dictionary that nobody's using, it's a great way to keep them out of the landfill is to use them in your, um, in your collage work. Now the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a pattern out of your um, image that you printed online. I'm going to do the um, leaf here today. So I was looking, think, trying to think of different things you may have around the house that you could use um, to make your pattern because most of you don't have pattern template material at home. If you do, great, use that. But if not, just think differently. So this is old um, index card. You could use cardstock. Um, you could use construction paper. You could use um, poster paper or even a cereal box would work. You could use the cereal box. Just you want something that's a little bit sturdy to draw the design onto and cut it out because you'll be using it to trace your design. Now if you um, if you don't have any kids you could just cut out the paper then that would be fine. But one of the things I want you to think about is the three different sections of this. So we have the mountain, the sky, and the leaf. And we don't want to cut out the leaf and cut out the mountain and cut out this jagged sky. For the sky we want to keep our piece big and then we want it so that it's underneath the mountain piece so that you're, you're not um, trying to match up these fussy, line, fussy cut lines. It'll be a lot easier if you just have the sky as a bigger piece so you don't actually have to draw that piece out. But we want, do want to do the mountain and the leaf. So what I did was I took my cardstock and I drew, I'm going to pretend, magic of television, but I just drew a square. Um, pretend you don't see these lines here. So then I took my square. Oh, and one thing I wanted to say, these sometimes these designs do not print out exactly the right size. We're doing 4x4, four 4x6, four, four six, or 6x6. Six six. And this one printed out a tiny bit smaller than 4x4. Four four, so we want to, you want to draw your square 4x4 four four and then just kind of fudge it in there. And then I took a pencil because I'm really just trying to draw this mountain part. And with collage, you're usually layering pieces on top of each other. It makes it a little easier. So I'm going to press hard and draw on this line with my pencil. I'm pressing really hard. So then when I go into my card, I can see that indentation. I know the camera won't pick it up, but I've drawn it here in ink so you can see. And then what I did was I just extended that line so that the sky would, would come down long enough and then my mountain and sky could meet right there. And then I did the same thing with the leaf. I just moved over, drew my leaf out, pressing really hard, and I did not draw the vein lines. I can come back in and draw that later. So just press really hard and you can get that. Um, and you, there's other ways to transfer design, but this is the, I thought would be the easiest for those of you who don't have a lot of art supplies at home. So then I cut these out. Then I have my mountain. What did I do for my mountain? Oh, my mountain. Um, and I thought I'd like to show you um, a way I use the, um, the paper because a lot of you may not have fabric at home and I wanted to show you how you can use some other fun things. So uh, I got this. Old books are great because they're, um, the paper is usually a little nicer so it, it's easier to cut. So I'm just going to color in my design. I'm going to use a lot of different colors because our our grass in the mountains are not just green. They're all kinds of shades of brown and lots of different ones. Um, the other thing that you can do when you're coloring on paper with crayons is to go in afterwards, um, put, some, put something else on top of it, like a little piece of parchment paper or copy paper and then um, go in and iron it. The ironing kind of helps the um, crayon melt a little bit and it melts into the paper and gives it, makes it a little bit stronger and easier when you're going to stitch through it. So now that I have this sort of colored, I can come in with my mountain piece, put it down here, and then trace around the outside edge. My, my 
marker did not trace. Oh. Worked a minute ago. Well, we're going to pretend I did that. Let's see if the pencil will work better. So you, anyway, you can see, you can trace the line, and then you can cut out on that line. So then, I got my backing fabric, and you can see here I made my backing fabric just a little bit bigger than my collage, because um, if you haven't stitched in a long time, or you're not very experienced in stitching, or especially for children, <coughs> you want to... Um, have it bigger so you have something else, something more to hold. I am I work in a 4x4 size almost every day, so I don't have any problem just stitching on the edges. But when you're starting out, it's a little bit easier. So I just used a regular glue stick to glue, to glue this paper onto here and this fabric. I did not do the top edge of the fabric because I want it, and the very side edges, because I want it to be easy to stitch through and you don't want Elmer's glue is a little sticky so it might get on your needle when you're hand stitching. So just use glue, put it down on the flannel, and it's holding quite nicely. I also put glue on my leaf, kind of dried out there. So you can see I've got my ground, my sky, and I'll just put my leaf on here. Now, I was saying that you don't have to, um, about the lines, you do not have to stitch everything. You actually don't have to stitch anything. It's not a requirement of the project. If you're not going to stitch, though, I highly recommend that you glue really well um, because the glue doesn't tend to hold forever here. We want to have make sure everything's glued down. And then when we attach it to the big banners that we're making, then we will stitch around the edges when we attach it. So it'll be fine. But you may want to, um, if you're not going to stitch at all, um, just use more glue. So um, you, this is a um, like a colored pencil. This one's a pastel marker. So I'm just going to draw in my lines. But you can draw and add to any of these. You can use markers. You can use um, crayons. Just whatever you have at home. This this is a really great project for this stay at home time because. You can be really creative about the supplies that you use and you, if you don't have the exact thing we had it really doesn't matter it, will, it may even be more fun if it's different so there's my basic design and we're gonna I'm gonna stitch around the edge and let me talk a little bit about needles and thread I have um, pearl cotton here I have embroidery floss and I have regular sewing machine thread people tend to discount sewing machine thread as a, an embroidery thread or um, collage art thread, but it really works wonderfully. So um, today I picked up this bigger thread so you could see. I'm just going to go around the outside edge of these, and we do have a couple videos for you of different stitching techniques that you can also access. Um, I tend to use the straight stitch the most. It's the easiest, and um, especially for kids, it's the easiest because it's just running stitch straight up and down. Um, and we've got tips in those videos for you as well. And I'm going to run out.